An arrest made in a string of gas station robberies. San Antonio police say it's just a start. We have the latest on that investigation, new at noon. The body believed to be that of a missing Texas mom is now found. What investigators are saying about what happened to her, straight ahead. And damp and cool today. We've got the latest radar update for you coming up. Live from KSAT at 12, the news at noon starts right now. San Antonio police say they have one down and possibly several others to go. They have arrested one person so far now looking for others believed to be tied to a whole string of convenience store robberies. Katrina Weber reports it's not this suspect's first arrest either. False. False. What's false? It's false. With denial on his lips and handcuffs on his wrists, 23-year-old Nathaniel Talley began his journey toward jail last night. San Antonio police, however, believe he actually set out on that road by going on a nearly 12-hour robbery spree earlier this month. This is still an ongoing investigation. We believe there are more off, uh, more suspects out there. Police believe Tally was part of a group that crisscrossed the city, robbing more than half a dozen convenience stores. At one on General McMullen, a clerk was pistol whipped. The robbers also shot at a witness who tried to follow them. This is where one of the first robberies happened, the 5200 block of Blanco. And it looks like for the first time in the series, money wasn't just taken from the store. The clerk's wallet also was stolen. Police say that became the group's tactic to take cell phones, jewelry and other property from the workers, along with the store's cash. After one robbery, Chief William McManus made an appeal for information. Police say a tip Did led them to tally at a northwest side apartment complex. The robbery task force, along with the SWAT team, was able to uh, surround the individual, uh, try to make contact with him. He fled the location, so there was a small foot pursuit. Officers who caught Tally say he had a gun on him. It turns out it's not his first time in trouble. His record shows several arrests, including one for a previous armed robbery. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. We have new developments in the case of a missing Texas mother and her infant. Overnight, officers surrounded a home in Houston, reportedly finding a one-month-old baby girl alive, but also recovering a body. ABC's Trevor Alt has the story. New details breaking overnight in Texas. A week after Heidi Broussard and her newborn daughter disappeared, authorities descending on this home near Houston. A baby girl has been found alive, but authorities also discovered a body. And a person familiar with the investigation tells ABC it's believed to be Heidi Broussard. The mother and daughter went missing December 12th, less than a month after the baby was born. Broussard dropped off her six-year-old son at school that day. She's seen here in a surveillance photo, but her fiance Shane Carey says she never returned to pick up her son. There is nothing valuable missing. Uh, her purse and her wallet and everything was up here. Uh, her cell phone is missing. It's been turned off. The FBI joined forces with the Texas Rangers and the Austin Police Department soon after, leading an extensive search across the state. Investigators thought the situation was immediately suspicious and feared foul play from the start because one child was missing while the other was left behind. Broussard's parents had said their daughter would never leave on her own. No, 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 no. No way. She wouldn't she would leave. She would not leave her son, her kids, or her heartbeat. Oh, yes. She wouldn't have left on her own. At least one person is in custody in this investigation, and right now an autopsy is underway to determine if the body authorities uncovered actually belongs to Heidi Broussard. Trevor Alt, ABC News, New York. Forced out by flames, an Eastside family will not be able to return home tonight after an overnight fire. Firefighters say a water heater likely caused the flames. Crews arrived here at the 800 block of Nevada just before 10 last night. We're told the family had a lot of stuff inside that home, making it hard for them to battle the blaze. Two dogs had to be rescued, but thankfully no one was hurt. The fire did cause about $5,000 worth of damage, and the people living there will be staying with other family while the utilities are restored. Live look outside with live cam. Ooh, 50 degrees out there, but you've got to remind people this is San Antonio, not London. Uh, with that picture, I mean, it, it says it all right there. Cloudy, we've got some rain coming down. It's going to be like that basically all day long. We're going to get some sun, though, tomorrow, so it changes again. The aquifer 
not really responding all that much. It's down two tenths of a foot to 671.8. And then your pollen count, mold mountain cedar still in the low category, so we're doing good in that regard. Let's take a look at the radar and show you what's going on there. And we do have some showers that are uh, popping up. Well, they've been pretty persistent south and east of San Antonio. We've seen the showers here, but we're sort of on the edge of things. So everything here in town has been very light. You run into more moderate rain closer to the coast and we'll see some decent rainfall totals there, maybe a quarter of an inch. We're not going to see that much here in town. And if you're in the hill country, you're not seeing much rain at all. But look for these showers to continue through, uh, say, 10 o'clock tonight, maybe even midnight. And then tomorrow, eventually we'll get a clearing line to come through here. There are the showers here across the city. Temperature wise, 50 degrees at the airport, 46 Bernie stage, 50 in Bull Verde, 49 Canyon Lake. It's a chilly day. Temperatures don't warm much. 53 by 4 o'clock. We'll taper off the rain chances just a bit as we go into tonight. Temperatures falling in the 40s, but 60s on the way tomorrow. We're going to talk more about that in your Christmas forecast here in just a few minutes. Ursula. Thank you, Justin. This morning on the city's north side, rain or shine, volunteers hard at work to make sure that no child in our town sleeps on the ground. It's all part of our Build a Bunk event in partnership with SAPD to benefit the nonprofit that's called Sleep in Heavenly Peace. They believe that with beds to sleep on, a child's overall health can improve. Alicia Barrera is at the warehouse with more. And the gift that they hope to bring to kids in need and here in San Antonio this year is the gift of a good night's sleep. But to do so, bunk beds are needed. And today the mission is building 20 bunk beds to benefit the children in need in San Antonio. And to tell me more about that mission is the president of the chapter here in San Antonio, Mr. Eddie Arnold. How important is it for volunteers to be here today? It's huge. Um, the need is a lot bigger than I ever thought it was. Um, currently, we have over 700 applications. We average over two kids per application. So we have 1,600 kids waiting for beds right now. And we need the community to help us build it. We can't do it on our own. And today, y'all got an added bonus because, of course, you need volunteers for the tools to build these beds. But there's also a need for money. There is. Um, you know, we're a charity, like all charities. Uh, we rely on the community. We re rely on gifts to get the money to build the beds, to buy the mattresses, and to get the bedding. And who was it that donated that check today to help? Today, Be Clean Car Wash here locally had a year-long fundraiser selling their hand towels, and they gave us a check for a little over $4,000. That's going to be a huge help to accomplish today's mission, right? It's awesome. They're great. Well, thank you so much. Thank so again, you. if you want to get involved on volunteering, we have a link on ksat.com where you can get involved. Also, those donations, again, they're very necessary. But today, again, the mission, 20 of these bunk beds to benefit our kids in need here in San Antonio for a good night's rest. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Did you know we're just one day away from one of the biggest holiday dinners in the city? Tomorrow is the 27th year of HEB annual Feast of Sharing. It's part of the store's ongoing initiative to fight hunger all throughout Texas and Mexico all year round. They've prepared holiday meals with all of the fixings, ham, mashed potatoes, green beans, pie. It is open to anyone who needs a little holiday cheer. This year at the HB Feast of Sharing, we are expecting 14,000 guests, but I guarantee we're prepared for more if they show up. So we really invite everyone from around the community to come share a meal with us. It's one of our favorite things that we do during the holiday season. This event happening at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center from 11 to 3. And the Feast of Sharing isn't just about food. There's going to be music there, kids activities, and Santa's there. Via is offering free rides down there. All you have to do is let the bus driver know. You're headed to the Feast of Sharing. They say dogs are a man's best friend and also a soldier's. Still ahead, we're going to introduce you to a nonprofit working to pair service dogs with men and women in the military. And a little later in sports, the Spurs pulling off a much needed win. We've got highlights and reactions from the players coming up. And after the break, we're going to catch up with some of the military members who were up very early to catch a flight home for the holidays. What they are looking forward to most next. This SA Salute Holiday Greeting is brought to you by Broadway Bank. Hi, I'm Captain Milam, currently deployed in Afghanistan. I'd like to wish my family and friends in San Antonio, Texas, a Feliz Navidad y Feliz Año Nuevo. 
I miss you all, and I'll be home soon. For most people, the holidays aren't about just gifts, but more about family. And this year can be magical for those who don't get to see their loved ones all year long very much. People like our men and women who are in the armed forces. Since San Antonio is Military City USA, that means a lot of people are stationed here throughout the year. And today, San Antonio International was filled with excited and anxious faces ready to go home for the holidays. One woman came here for basic training in August and says it is the longest that she's been away from home. The most I've been is usually like a week or so. And this one, it was like, it got to a point where, like it's not that you were away from home, but you didn't really have any contact with home. Like you couldn't talk to them on a the regular if you needed to. You kind of had to like, if you got lucky enough to get mail, and you had to hear what they had to say. So it was like, it was a different experience. Putting out cookies this year? Yes, <laughs> definitely. Because I want to get to remember this again in case I don't have a chance like in the upcoming years. Audrey says it isn't food she's craving, but sleep instead. Meanwhile, even though San Antonio is known for its Tex-Mex staples, Kathy Muhar says she can't wait to get a taste of a home-cooked meal. Definitely home cooking. Um, I've tried like the Mexican restaurants here, but it's nothing like my mom's food back home. <laughs> it's nothing like it. <laughs> Pozole and tamales. Nothing like it. Home for Kathy is actually Washington State. Aside from the food, well, she's looking forward to snowboarding and something she hasn't done in years, sleeping in. Meantime, a military mom is on a mission. Kathy Golher of Cibolo has been connecting veterans battling post-traumatic stress disorder to the help they need. And she started Operation Battle Buddies as a way to pair service dogs with heroes. KSAT's Patty Santos gives us a look at how this program has changed lives. This litter was born on Veterans Day. That's cool. Uh-huh. And this litter was born the next day. Kathy Gollier feels like connecting physically and emotionally wounded veterans with a battle buddy is her calling. Because I love my country. Because I'm a proud mom. And to think, thank these vets and their families for what they've done for us. In 2015, the mother of two veterans started Operation Battle Buddies. She breeds Labrador Retrievers and gifts the puppies to veterans in need of a service dog. Somebody that's there all the time and loving unconditionally and just helping them bring their anxiety down. Good boy. The latest litter of 15 has already been paired up with veterans. At eight weeks old, the pups will embark on their mission. The first week of January, these puppies will be eight weeks and they'll be headed home with their heroes and then the training starts. Six months ago, Rich Stinson was paired up with Bailey. She's added a lot of light to some darkness. The 25 year retired Army veteran was diagnosed with severe PTSD and clinical depression. His therapist got him in touch with OBB. Now, with the help of Bailey, brighter days are ahead. She's a very welcome relief uh, at the end of a hard day uh, because although I can't sit and talk with her and have her talk back, uh, I just have a sense that she understands. OBB pays for training to get each dog the service dog certification required to meet each veteran's needs. Costs are over $3,000 for each dog. Veterans they help live across the country. In, in the crate. Besides life-changing healing, Stinson says OBB has brought him camaraderie with her trainers and other veterans in the program. Hard to put into words without getting emotional, but she is a significant part of my life and a... Uh, significant part of um, my recovery, which is going to be an ongoing process. Gallier's scrapbook is a reminder of the more than 20 veterans and countless lives OBB has touched. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. If you would like some more information on Operation Battle Buddies, you can head over to our website, KSAT.com. Meantime, we'll be right back with a look at weather and Justin Horn. I love it when it rains, when we need rain, but mm -hmm. this is not going to do the trick. Yeah, that, that's kind of the unfortunate part. We're going to get rain all day, but it's just so light. It's not a mountain. It's just nuisance rain. It's what it is. It's making the roads kind of slick, and it's not going to fill up the rain gauges. 
It'll help us a little bit with the drought. Every little bit helps, but we need something probably more down the line. Uh, but we're going to get some sun this weekend, some good weather for Christmas. So if you're looking forward to clear skies, they are on the way. Let's take a look at the time lapse because you can see sort of the bouts of rain coming through. We've had several here. 50 degrees right now at the airport. Dew point is at 48. Visibility is down to about a mile, so the rain is kind of settling in. We may have a little bit of fog out there from time to time. You see the Doppler radar and that shield of rain stretches from basically I-35 down to the coast. And we're seeing some more moderate rain as you get closer to Victoria and Beeville. Here in San Antonio, it's just a very light sort of misty type rain. And then once you get into the hill country, most of that rain is well, ending, uh, but a little closer look here at Bear County and you can see actually some light rain, maybe a little bit more moderate starting to show up there along 410. And so this will continue into this evening. There's no end for it today, but uh, again, it does uh, shut off tonight and there is actually a clearing line out here. We look at the uh, visible satellite picture that clearing line stretches from Junction Rock Springs down to Del Rio. So in Del Rio, they're starting to see some sun. It'll take some time. This clearing line is going to work through South Texas. Right now it's about 130 miles away and it is moving very slowly. I suspect that it'll be here by tomorrow morning and that's when the sun pops back out. And that is on the back side of the system. You can see very nicely here on water vapor it's sort of getting stretched out a little bit, but a little upper level low here that's working through. That's going to intensify a little bit as it works east of Texas, but we'll get on the back side of it with some sinking air and that takes away our rain chances tomorrow. As we look at the big picture, if you're traveling today, there's not a whole lot of issues. Unsettled weather here in South Texas, a few showers down there in Florida, and then our next weather maker, which is up here across the Pacific Northwest. I say next weather maker. This is scheduled to be here by Christmas Eve into Christmas, but it's not going to do a lot for us. It's going to move to the north. It's not going to bring a front through, maybe give us a slight chance at a shower, but even that, I think uh, the chances are on the low side. So uh, it's not going to be a big weather maker really for us. Future cast shows that uh, we'll continue to see some light showers through the six o'clock hour. Best chance is going to be east of San Antonio. So Gonzales, Beville, uh, Victoria, places like that will have the better chance for rain. By midnight, a lot of those showers are starting to push closer to the coast. We still could see some rain out there, though, and that clearing line works ever closer. So the hill country starts to clear out overnight. By tomorrow morning, we should see the clearing line here in San Antonio. Uh, sun pops out and that clearing line will eventually make its way all the way through uh, South Texas by Saturday afternoon. So forecast for today, we'll keep the rain chances there. Temperatures only warming up to about 53 degrees. That's it. So we're not going to see much change from where we are right now. Easterly winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour and we'll go 63 tomorrow with some morning clearing as we officially jump into winter 66 Sunday, 68 Monday. And we talked about a warm Christmas Eve and Christmas right there around 70 both days. Really gorgeous weather. So if we're not going to have, you know, snow or cold temperatures, at least it is uh, it is nice. This is the other better choice. Right, exactly. <laughs> uh, white Christmases are sort of hard to come by down here. So. Down here, absolutely. Yeah. Coming up next, a big win, a hard fought win for the Spurs. DeZonte Murray back in the starting lineup as DeMar DeRozan and the Spurs face off against the Brooklyn Nets. This should have been easy since the Spurs have owned them in the AT&T Center since 2003, but someone forgot to tell the Nets about that. They opened on a 12-2 run. Jared Allen with the tomahawk throw down, but the Spurs had to battle back. DeJounte with the corner three, and that's going to get the Spurs within one. Then it's Patty Mills from the same spot. Spurs are still down 33-27 after one. In the second quarter, the Nets Garrett Temple with the alley-oop to San Antonio's own Tarian Prince from Warren High School. The Nets go up 14, but the Spurs battle back again. This time the defense fuels the offense and somehow DeMar gets this one to go. And then Lonnie Warka, the fourth with the three and the Spurs are within six at the break, 56-50. In the third quarter, the Spurs are down 10 with under two minutes to play, and that's when they went on a run. Patty with the bounce pass to Jacob Pirtle, and then Patty with a catch, and he shoots for three. Derek White with another catch, another three. We're tied at 81, and Patty Mills drove to the basket, giving the Spurs the first lead of the game.
a mindset thing, you know, for me trying to um, just be aggressive and, and, and being in that attack mode, I think. I think it, it can take pressure off, you know, uh, Lamarcus and and, uh, and Demar. So, um, you know, I do play with a lot of emotion, a lot of uh, positive vibes. So um, it, it comes out of me from time to time. Final score, 118 to 105. There is now 17 in a row against the Nets in San Antonio. Meantime, Spurs hosting Los Angeles. The Clippers this weekend. Tip-off at the AT&T Center is at 730. We have congratulations in order to Spurs assistant coaches Tim Duncan and Becky Hammond, both nominated to the Naismith Hall of Fame class of 2020. Duncan, who played for 19 seasons with the Spurs, leading the silver and black to five NBA championships, is arguably the best power forward to ever play the game. Duncan will be a first ballot Hall of Famer when the class is announced during the NCAA Tournament Championship in Atlanta. Meantime, Becky Hammond, she played 16 seasons in the WNBA after a great college career at Colorado State. She played eight seasons in San Antonio as a member of the Silver Stars, then just Stars before the retiring then in 2014. Since that time, she has been an assistant coach with the Spurs. And we have to mention the fact that she is the first full-time female assistant coach in the history of the NBA. This weekend, one of San Antonio's favorite holiday traditions continues. It's the San Antonio Symphony Holiday Pop performance happening at the Tobin Center. The event is tonight at 8 and Sunday at 2 p.m. More headlines in your next half hour. Why Nancy Pelosi says she's waiting to send the articles of impeachment over to the Senate for a trial. In Washington, President Trump lashing out at an influential evangelical magazine. That magazine, which was founded by the Reverend Billy Graham, is calling for Trump's removal. The fiery editorial by Christianity Today comes two days after Trump became the third president in history to be impeached. President Trump, though, firing back as well at House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, who is threatening to delay sending over the impeachment charges to the Senate until she sees the Senate's plan. ABC's Mona Kosar Abdi is in Washington with more. In a series of defensive tweets, President Trump directly firing back at a blistering editorial in Christianity Today, calling for his removal from office after impeachment. The president calling the influential Christian publication founded by evangelist Billy Graham, quote, a far left magazine or very progressive and claiming, quote, no president has done more for the evangelical community and it's not even close. Graham's son Franklin also slamming the editorial writer for invoking his father's name. This uh, morning, in an interview with CNN, the, the author defending so, his controversial uh, piece. When Christians of any stripe support a cause that uh, strikes me as manifestly immoral, it does damage to the cause that I've given my life to. The condemnation by the Christian outlet, another blow to the president, who has been popular among many white evangelicals. On Wednesday, Trump president became the third right president in American history to be impeached. Two. Article 1 is adopted. But the Senate trial to determine if he shall be removed from office is in limbo after House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has delayed sending them the articles of impeachment. Our founders, when they wrote the Constitution, uh, they suspected that there could be a rogue president. I don't think they suspected that we could have a rogue president and a rogue leader in the Senate at the same time. Democrats claim in order for the trial to be fair, Senate Republicans must allow testimony from at least four witnesses the White House has blocked from testifying. That includes acting chief of staff Mick Mulvaney and former National Security Advisor John Bolton. But Majority Leader Mitch McConnell responded by accusing House Democrats of getting cold feet about the process. In front of the entire country and second guessing whether they even want to go to trial. Republican leaders in the Senate say they don't care one way or another if Speaker Pelosi sends the articles over, but the president is reportedly furious about that approach because he's been pushing for a speedy trial from the start to clear his name. Mona Kosaramdi, ABC News, Washington. I see this as a constitutional moment. We need to restore the integrity of the presidency. The president is not king in America. The law is king.
Let me remind everyone that I'm the person who started the need to impeach movement over two years ago. Just seven candidates took to the stage in the sixth Democratic debate of the election season. Comes on the heels of that monumental vote in the House to impeach President Donald Trump. But the focus turned from the man they want to beat in November to the candidates themselves. Many were seeking to clarify their positions and personal character, hoping to make waves heading into the final weeks before the Iowa caucuses. They discussed topics like economy, trade, health care, and climate change. Get back into the international climate change agreement. I will do that on day one. We need an economy that works for working families, not just the 1%. Mayor Pete Buttigieg ended up being one of the main targets of the night. Other candidates called on him to prioritize the economy more. Buttigieg has seen a surge in recent polls, especially in early voting states. Let's look outside, see if there's any. It just got worse. <laughs> Earlier it was just looked foggy and murky uh, and drizzly. Now it looks downright wet out there. Yeah, it's been pretty soggy for much of the day. We had sort of these bouts of light rain. Now some more light rain moving into San Antonio. It's going to be wet through the evening. The evening commute's going to be soggy too, so keep that in mind. Showers passing through South Texas. The bulk of the action is south and east of San Antonio, but you can see we have some returns right here over town. If you're out west, uh, the rain's really not there. Lake Rock Springs at the Del Rio. Things are uh, fairly quiet there. And we'll give you a little tour of the studio. There you go. Uh, let's take a look a little closer look at uh, Bear County and you can see where some of the rain is. Uh, maybe a little more heavier on the uh, northwest side of town. Seeing some uh, yellow color there. Uh, these are continuing to these showers continuing to move off to the north and northeast. Temperature wise, we're sitting right at 50 degrees. 46 Bernie stage 49 comfort 51 in Tarpley and on the edge of your screen there you can see there is a bit of a clearing line trying to move into the hill country so some places out west will see some sun today don't think that will happen here in San Antonio if you're doing some traveling today people are starting to hit the roads or maybe head to the airport we've got showers here no big delays though and as we look across the country it's really just San Francisco right now that is uh, dealing with some delays with uh, some clouds there forecast for today up to 53. That's about it. Cloudy skies. We'll see rain chances into this evening, but the clearing line does move through tomorrow. We'll get some sun this weekend. We'll talk more about that seven day forecast and your holiday forecast coming up in just a bit. Ursula. It is crunch time, not just for those working to deliver your online orders in time, Justin. Also for procrastinators who still need to scratch some names off that list. Tips to help you get it done coming up. Plus, we've got tech and business headlines from Cheddar. Hello, everyone. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. Beyonce and Adidas are partnering up to launch a new collection and a relaunch of the singer's Ivy Park brand. The collection will include shoes, clothing, and accessories all in the color scheme of maroon, orange, and even cream. Now, Adidas described the collection as gender neutral and will be featured on the cover of January's Elle magazine. Meanwhile, a suit against Southwest Airlines will proceed after a federal judge has rejected the airline's bid, all to dismiss a discrimination lawsuit. The suit was brought after an Arabic speaker passenger was removed from a flight all when another passenger feared that he might be a terrorist. Now, Southwest Airlines has so far declined to comment. And General Motors is issuing two recalls for more than 900,000 new vehicles worldwide, all due to brake software issues and fire risks. The automaker is recalling about a half a million Chevy Silverados, Cadillacs, and GMC Sierras, all due to those potential safety hazards. The recalls include over 800,000 vehicles right here in the U.S. And that's Chatter Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Pachado from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Time is running out for all those procrastinators who still need to buy Christmas gifts as an army of people tries to move those packages to their final destinations. ABC's chief business correspondent Rebecca Jarvis has a look behind the scenes at the holiday hustle. 
This is the heart of the action for all of those holiday deliveries here at this U.S. Postal Services facility. They have nearly 3,000 employees working around the clock, 650,000 employees across the country working to get your packages home and under the Christmas tree on time. With the deliveries up this year, 21%, you've now seen that combination with the wintry weather mix lead to some delays at FedEx and UPS. Their on-time delivery rates are actually below where they were this time last year. The U.S. Postal Service, on the other hand, is up from where they were this time last year with more on-time deliveries. But you can bet there will be more packages going out this year than ever before. Two and a half billion particles are leaving the U.S. Postal Service and going to homes across the country over the next three days, five days before Christmas. And you also have a number of retailers with their cutoff dates. These deadlines are important if you're still planning to shop online and you want to do it for the least expensive option. Target and Best Buy. This morning is the cutoff deadline if you're shopping those websites and you want to get it there on time. Macy's Saturday and Walmart and Amazon Sunday. Amazon is specific for Prime members, so pay attention. It doesn't necessarily apply to every single item on their website, so double check that fine print. And if you are in that last minute procrastinator's rush, one of the great options this holiday season is to shop online, pick it up in store. That way you know exactly what you're getting when you arrive there. Rebecca Jarvis, ABC News, New York. Today is expected to be the busiest air travel day over the Christmas and New Year's holiday period. Airlines for America saying 3 million people are expected to travel on major U.S. airlines headed into the holiday week. Saturday through next Friday expected to be just as busy with 2.9 million travelers. But the day that wins the title of busiest travel day of the year, as always, is the Sunday after Thanksgiving. I imagine we are not going to have too much travel problems once we get past today, Justin, this still looks pretty wet out there. Yeah, you're right. And even if you're traveling today, it really is just South Texas where we're seeing the rain. Most of the rest of Texas is uh, doing okay. We haven't had a big temperature spread today, that's for sure. The low this morning, 49. High so far today, 52. Uh, we basically stayed right around that 50 degree mark. The averages are 63 and 51. So these, uh, at least the high temperature is a little bit below average. Records are 85 and 21. Those not in jeopardy. And so far, we have picked up a tenth of an inch of rain, which is nice to see. The rainfall does end. We've got some warmer temperatures on the way, maybe some 70s as we head towards Christmas. We'll talk about it coming up. All anybody wants for Christmas, at least those of us who are going to be having a crowd at the house, is yeah. good enough weather for people to go outside yeah, it'll be stuffy. Yeah, it'll be great. Go outside, play some football, whatever, you know, with family barbecue, members. barbecue, whatever. Jump in it's, the pool. It's South Texas. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the weather looks warm for the holidays. Uh, and I say warm. We're talking 70 degrees, not hot. Yeah, it's actually pretty nice. Uh, we're going to get a good stretch of weather. But today, not so much. It is cloudy. It is gray. It is wet. It's a uh, gift wrap day. Uh, it is for sure. Stay inside. Watch a movie day. Uh, and the drizzle, the light rain continues. You see on live cam there, not the best picture outside. 50 degrees at Port SA in the uh, airport, 49 stints in a Randolph, and the temperature basically has not moved. I mean, we're going to be stuck right around this 50 degree mark throughout the rest of today. So don't expect it to warm up much. We've got northeast chilly winds as well. That rain shield has been pretty persistent, as so we thought it would be south and east of San Antonio. Still getting the rain. We're sort of on the edge of things here in town and then as you get up in the hill country the rain sort of tapers off and if you're Uvalde uh, out towards Uvalde or Del Rio not seeing much rain either and in fact we're seeing some clearing out in Del Rio I'll show you that in just a second but a little closer look here at Bear County you see some of the rain we've got maybe a little bit more moderate rain now showing up along 1604 on the west side and then uh, just north of 410 sort of by the medical center there along I-10 seeing some uh, perhaps more moderate rain moving through uh, looking at the estimated rainfall totals and these numbers aren't Exactly correct. We picked up about a tenth of an inch here in San Antonio, and really it's not showing yet that we have picked up some accumulations here in town, but we have a tenth of an inch. The highest number I saw was down there towards Kennedy, 
where it was closing in on about a quarter of an inch. And I think that's probably where we're going to cap it off. Don't know that we'll see much more than a quarter of an inch. Maybe some slightly higher totals as you get down to the coast. Uh, but look at all the cloud cover. It is definitely there. That cloudy line I was talking about is slowly easing east, but very slowly. Rock Springs now in the sun. Del Rio seeing some sun. Eagle Pass seeing a little bit of sun there, too. Uh, I don't think this clearing line will make it San Antonio before sunset, but by tomorrow morning it should be moving through. Right now it is about 107 miles away, so it is making a little bit of headway as it uh, moves east and some more stable air there behind it. And obviously there will be some warmer temperatures back there where there is sun. But uh, the big picture here across the state, most of the rain relegated right here to South Texas and the coastal bend. And uh, that rain is going to progress eastward. So Houston, I-45 corridor, they're going to start to get some rain here soon as well. Here's what the future cast looks like. Uh, we'll see uh, rain stay with us through about 6 o'clock. And the showers will be there uh, by tonight, uh, midnight. I think a lot of this starts to move off to the east. There still will be some activity on the radar, but probably south and east of San Antonio. And then I mentioned that clearing line gets a little bit closer by tomorrow morning. And the sun starts to show up. And we're going to see basically a sunny day on your Saturday. Saturday and Sunday look fantastic. Temperatures will eventually rebound into the 60s. Today, 50s for highs, 53 showers. Easterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then uh, tomorrow, we'll go 63, an improvement with mostly sunny skies. 66 Sunday, 68 Monday. And then uh, 68 Tuesday, Christmas Eve, 70 on Wednesday. Not really even all that cold in the morning either. We've had definitely some colder Christmases, but this one's going to be a little bit above average, it looks like, as we go into next week. Maybe a, a slight chance of rain later next week, but no, nothing that jumps off the map. Not quite beach weather, but close. Close to it, <laughs> and I'm sure we've had warmer Christmases before, too. So You're right. it's a nice compromise. It, it could be worse. All right. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. Big weekend for Star Wars. But it does have some competition. R.J. Marquez has a look at what is now showing. It's the last weekend before Christmas, so we're staying in the holiday spirit. I'm Alicia Barrera, and these are your weekend picks. One of San Antonio's favorite holiday tradition continues. It's the San Antonio Symphony Holiday Pops performance happening at the Tobin. There's three performances, including one on Saturday evening at 8 p.m. and Sunday afternoon at 2. And calling all witches, wizards, and muggles to take a break from holiday shopping. This weekend at the zoo, they're having the Harry Otter Day from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. It's an event included with zoo admission, and it's free for annual pass holders. No magic tricks here. Come dressed as your favorite character. Now back to holiday shopping. You can head over to La Villita on Saturday from 5.30 to 7.30. It's going to be holiday shopping by day and a free family-friendly movie screening of Santa Claus in Plaza Juarez by night. Cozy blankets and lawn chairs welcome. And for more on these events and everything happening around town, you can head over to KSAT.com. For the noon, I'm Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. It is going to be a big weekend at the box office. The latest Star Wars movie is set to storm theaters. But for the first time in recent memory, The Force has some fresh competition at the box office. KSAT 12's digital journalist RJ Marquez has your weekend movie preview. The feeling. The Force brought us together. The Force Awakens writer-director J.J. Abrams returns to wrap things up with Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker. Good people will fight if we lead them. When he kicked off the current trilogy, Abrams had questions. What do you want to see? What must you see? What is demanding being seen? Which characters need to be there? How do you balance the scope and spectacle of these things that you realize you want to do with the intimacy and emotion? What are you doing there, 3PO? Taking one last look, sir. As my friends. Meanwhile, Daisy Ridley's Ray still has questions of her own. She feels like she needs to find where she came from in order to move forward. But John Boyega's Finn has finally overcome his doubts about who he is. He's on his stuff. He wants to get stuff done. He's heroic. He fights for the resistance. No doubt about it. He would die for it. And it's just fun because I just actually get to just play a badass in this one. That's it. <laughs> Always. Now it 
is time to make the choice. Cats claws its way from Broadway to the big screen with an all-star cast singing and dancing all decked out in digital fur. The Cats cast includes Judi Dench, Jason Derulo, Idris Elba, Ian McClellan, and Jennifer Hudson, who performs the signature song, Memory. Each cat has their own song which tells their story. And in memory is Grizabella's story. You know, she's the dejected cat. She's um, obviously heartbroken and, and, and just, just torn. And so this is her chance to speak from her heart and, and, and just show her heart. Box office watchers say the adaptation of the long-running stage musical should open with up to $17 million. HR's on the phone because you called me a skirt. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I gotta read that manual again. <laughs> the attitude off camera was even worse. Bombshell, the drama about the sexual harassment scandal at Fox News Channel, expands after a strong opening and limited release last weekend. Estimates for this weekend range from $7 to $14 million. For The Noon, R.J. Marcus, KSAT 12 News. Today at 1 of, uh, today on SA Live coming up at 1 o'clock, I should have said, Mike's taste buds are put to the test by a mother and daughter holiday party planning duo. And a real holiday heart warmer, one of the finalists on the last season of Dancing with the Stars. Now San Antonio's own Allie Brooke returning to the hospital where she was born to pay a surprise visit this Christmas to children and families spending the holidays there. And it's a holiday mystery. Mike is testing his tasting abilities with GB Design House and gets the skinny on Christmas party hosting ideas. Got to have that meat and cheese board, right? Plus, Fiona playing a tune on a baby grand piano rolled into Market Square by a brand new music store here in town. It even helps you record and play back your own music on an iPad. And of course, David Elder is going to fill us up. He's trying out a burger joint that's keeping it simple with the freshest ingredients. And Elder eats encore cocktails, celebrities, and a whole lot more in just a few minutes on SA Live.